Hi, I'm your host Michael and you're watching Love Line. On today's episode, we're off to see Shane at Motec Machining and Cylinder Mellows. He's down in Pinjara, Western Australia, so a bit of a trek, but I think it's going to be worth it. If you know me, you'll know I'm all about quality. Although I don't always meet the standards I set for myself, I always strive to achieve quality in my work. Where I find gaps in my knowledge and limitations in my skill set, I look to those around me who care about workmanship, craft, perfection, and art. I haven't met Shane previously, but I have a strong feeling he's all about attention to detail, innovation, and meticulously high standards. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, we've got a full day ahead with Shane, so come along for the ride. It's an hour and a half drive, so let's motor. Shane Costasen is a well-known figure within the Scott Bonner Restorations community. To many of us, he's known for manufacturing replacement rails and sides. But he also makes and sells reels and a growing inventory of Scott Bonner parts, like his innovative front roller cradle. Shane owns and operates Motec machining and cylinder mowers. We sat down with him to talk about his story and the Motec story. Yeah, I'm located here in Pinjarra. Um, I was born in Pinjarra. I've been here all my life. Just a nice place, Michael, a nice place to be. Um, the pace is reasonably slow. I'm very lucky. I live on a cul-de-sac with a park on one side. Retired people all around me. Um, got a fairly you know, 905 square metre block. Um, so yeah, just very comfortable, very happy. No, it's very pleasant down here. Uh, plus, I can have six poodles here. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shane is a well-qualified tradesman with three trades to his name, and he has a lengthy history in motor mechanics and racing. I started my apprenticeship at age 15 as a motor mechanic for the local Chrysler dealer in uh, Pinjarra. From there, I went to an earth-moving firm in Maroona, and it's there that I pursued two other trades, uh, fitter machinist and... Um, heavy duty diesel fitter, if you like. Um, from there, I went to Alcoa, um, and after being there for 12, I think, or 18 months, I was made up as a um, maintenance shift foreman. Uh, there, I was in, uh, in control of a group of people um, that performed uh, maintenance functions on all the earth moving equipment there. So in other words, uh, the equipment I dug the dirt out of the ground. Um, from there, I went and started my own business, which was uh, in the mo back to motor vehicles, and I became an authorised Ford service centre in Pinjarra when the Ford dealer at the time moved to Mandra. So it was in liaison with him um, that I was able to do that. And I leased his property in Pinjarra um, for a number of years. Um, and that then led me to, in 19... 91 starting Motec Racing and Development which was my drag racing side of the business in Pinjarra. So one, we performed normal um, motor vehicle repairs and maintenance, the other side of it was uh, the racing side of it. Uh, from there um, I worked for myself from home for several years and then got offered a job with an engineering firm in Pinjarra that had a fab shop, fab and uh, maintenance shop in Jandicott as well, um, but their Pinjarra base was a stepping stone for mine site fitters and I was employed there on the strength of the fact that I had experience with Alcoa and they were moving one of the crushers there, which is a, a multi-million dollar job. So I went and worked for them for 10 years, uh, 19 years, um, the last five was at Jandicott. Um, and in March this year, I decided to uh, leave Jandicott and pursue my then growing interest um, in Scott Bonner Lawn Mowers. Here we are today. Here Thank we are today. <laughs> so you're still working part-time and this is sort of your developing full-time hobby, should we say. Yeah, it's, it's funny how it started off. It started off at Jandicott uh, with the employment of a young guy 
we started talking about lawn mowers. He mentioned the Scott Bonner renovation page, um, and he hooked me into that page, and it just it just went out of control from there. Um, so yes, um, after leaving Jandicott, uh, a fella in uh, Mandra, a long-time friend of mine, had been chasing me for a number of years to go and work for him. So I was all set to do that, then COVID stepped in, uh, changed a few things, so I sat back and took the opportunity to ramp up the uh, what I'm doing at home. And that went so well that when uh, the dust settled with COVID a little. Um, I said to him that uh, I really just want to work casual for the time being. So yes, I do three days over there. Uh, it's a speed shop. Uh, we're doing um, custom restorations on $100,000 plus motor vehicles. Um, some very nice Aussie muscle cars yeah. um, and other bits and pieces. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's three days a week. I thought I would come home to the business here and work Friday and Monday, but that hasn't happened. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Everything Scott Bonner does tend to get away from us. It, like that, it does. It? It's a, a, a disease, I think. <laughs> Shane is a dedicated Scott Bonner collector and restorer, but he's also a passionate lawny. The two obviously go hand in hand, and so I asked him which came first, the lawn or the mowers? Oh, definitely the lawn. Um, I came from a background living obviously in my parents' place where the block was quarter of an acre. So big front lawn, big back lawn, water was two and six. You could pour water on uh, at will. Um, and my parents were very, very house proud. And I think that's probably um, uh, you know, where it came from for me. Um, and of course, being a mechanical person, even from very, very young, was all I ever wanted to do was push the lawnmower around. Um, so I used to, you know, beg and what have you to uh, to push the lawnmower around, which back in the early days were Victor's, mind you, the old dish plate Victor. Uh, then my dad progressed to a Scott Bonner, uh, and like you or somebody, if you had a Scott Bonner lawnmower in this town, back then in the, in the late 70s, uh, you were someone. So I think the two tied up then, um, I used to like the lawn, like, love the garden, even, you know, obviously today, now, there's nothing more relaxing to me to have a day off and go out in the garden, spend in the garden. I enjoy the garden. Uh, I've certainly learnt a lot more about lawn, um, having been involved in, um, in, in, the, in the Scott Bonner um, mower scene. Um, and it just gives you the incentive, I think, to for the two to go hand in hand and um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I, I've gone from Buffalo to Cooch here and um, going to Vertimo out the back there at some point when my dog's a little bit older because they like wrecking the lawn. Very hard to keep a good lawn here with the dogs, but um, yeah, it's a labour love, but yeah, certainly enjoy it. But no, definitely lawn first, uh, then the mowers, and behind me um, is my very first Scott Bonner that I still own today. It's still pretty much original. I bought brand new in 1982. Stepping into the shed behind Shane's house, there's no doubt about his considerable collection of Scott Bonner mowers. He's not reluctant to share the approximate count, but he's got a plan in mind for both his community and his retirement. So how many Scotties do you own? Well, that's a good question, Michael. Uh, at last count, 125. And that includes edges, of course. That's about 25 or so edges in that one. And is it all about the 45 or are there, uh, are there other interests in there? in the Scott Bonner range and the Rover range? Oh, definitely the 45, uh, the Rover being the, um, you know, the, the carry-on and the last in line. Um, 33s are starting to become popular. I've started to manufacture, um, you know, parts for the 33. Uh, I do own only one 33. Um, I, yeah, it's really, really about the 45, I think, yeah. And do you consider yourself to be a collector, or is the intention to sort of hold them and sell them off as part of the, as you do them up as part of the business? Definitely a collector. Um, I've rarely sold machines. Um, there'll come the time when I run out of room and that's what has to happen. Um, and at some point further down the track, I will renovate some of my machines and uh, offer them for sale. Um, 
We have a local museum here in Pinjarra, which goes back to old machinery and steam engines and so on and so forth. I'm going to donate um, some Scotties to them. So it'll be a 38, a 14, a 17 and a unicorn uh, to be on display. I'll renovate them and they'll be on display down there. And when I'm long gone, I'll be remembered in this town. Um, a bit of a plaque in there. Yeah, it? maybe. Uh, remembered in this town for something anyway. Nice. Um, but yeah. Shane says his curiosity and love for things mechanical goes back to his childhood. So can you tell us a little bit about where your passion for Scott Barnes originated? Oh, definitely my father. With the advent of him buying um, his first Scott Bonner, he only ever had two. And me being fairly young, just wanted to, um, didn't have to push it around. It went by itself. Uh, I would say that we were probably the first uh, owners of a Scott Bonner on our street. So you were somebody who had a Scott Bonner. And a rather intriguing uh, four-stroke engine, um, so reasonably quiet, easy to start. Um, and it had things on it that, as a young kid, I just seen it spun around and cut the lawn and it had chains under a cover and a clutch and a clutch lever and all that was fascinating to me. So it was that mechanical side of it um, that uh, intrigued me with the, with the Scott Bonner as opposed to the Vic that I pushed around not long before that. There's nothing to hide in there, is there? No. The cylinder mower is clearly a part of the fabric of the Australian story for Shane and his interest is focused squarely on the Scott Bonner and Rover machines. And so I take it the, uh, the, the interest is exclusively Scott Bonner. It's, there's no other interest in the, we spoke about stars earlier, or the Denny Wise, El Rose, any of that stuff. Yes, no, not, not, if I, if I did um, develop an interest to those other uh, breeds, if you want to call that mates, it would only be purely uh, to manufacture parts and uh, a business in a business sense. Uh, the Scotties are, are totally different. They're they're just one of those iconic machines. You know, they're as Aussie as Russell Coit. <laughs> Mechanics and racing have played a huge part in Shane's life, and he says there's a carryover from his racing days into his work in mower restorations. Uh, the drag racing uh, thing was something I did from age 17 uh, right through until two years ago. Uh, very fortunate to own three pro stock cars, um, all Fords, of course. I might plug that. Um, but I think there, the, the Scott Bonner uh, machine just encumbers so many things it has an engine it has ratios chain drives it has clutches i think that's what captivates a lot of people uh they're they're not complex they're not rocket science but they they have just all these components um and you know the racing side of things uh i invested in machinery to manufacture my own parts uh, because stuff we just couldn't get took too long into the US. If you broke something simple, you couldn't buy it. Titanium, stuff like that. So I bought machines and equipment to weld titanium and uh, machine titanium. Um, so I guess when racing finished for me a couple of years ago, uh, because of the you know, spiraling cost, um, me being a little, a little older, um, to me, the Scott Bonner was a natural progression, really. Uh, given that I've sort of always had that interest in them uh, in the background uh, and it came to the surface really after, after racing finished several years ago. Interest in lawn care and cylinder mowers has surged in recent years with prices increasing as well. The Scott Bonner Restorations Facebook group has a huge membership, over 15,000 members, many of who joined in the last few years. I asked Shane what he makes of the passion out there and some of the amazing builds we see so regularly. Unbelievable. Who would have ever thought? Seriously, who would have ever thought? I joined a, a restoration page by accident, as I mentioned earlier. And I think four, 4,000 maybe, which I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty big. And where it is now is absolutely unbelievable. But I think a lot of that's contributed to by um, people, I guess like myself and George and Jason Cushway, 
um, you know, offering, you know, quality parts to keep these things alive. Um, and the history, if you go back through the history, you know, Bluey Cullen in South Australia has, uh, you know, posted a lot of interest in history stuff, as has George. And just the history, to me, is, is fascinating. And when you buy these machines, to talk to people that bought them brand new, um, I could, I've been captivated talking to these people for hours. It really is quite fascinating. But yeah, I mean, who would have ever thought uh, that the lowly old Scott Bottle lawnmower, uh, that yes, I have picked up only one on the roadside verge. Uh, behind me is a unicorn, which I didn't pick up off the roadside verge, but that's where it came from. Um, uh, you won't find one down the roadside verge. And, you know, subsequently the cost. Uh, it's like anything else, as the demand increases, the price goes up. I was paying probably 40 to 80 dollars for 45. Now here in WA, um, you know, if you can get one for three or 400, you're doing pretty well. And for a half decent machine, you're paying upwards of that. Do you think it's justified? Um, depends on what you want to do with them, Michael. If you want to uh, renovate and sell and make money, um, that's getting more and more difficult as the price goes up. Um, but yeah, look, I think they I think it's justified. Uh, the thing that intrigues me the most about um, Scott Bonner and where it is today is uh, I'm 62 years old, and I'm dealing with with young guys that are 20 and 25 years old, you know, and they they've got a passion for these machines. Some of them are, are very mechanical uh, people, yet they still play with these machines. Um, some of my best customers are doctors and dentists um, who uh, I don't know how they got interested or involved but they are um, I think the page has been you know a lot of credit to the page um, you know and uh, and Glenn Russell and admin guys for creating a thing in the first place it's it's been a big push because new people coming in with these machines have got somewhere to go uh, Kim with the Bible uh, how invaluable is that some great resources out there for oh, the new starters now. Absolutely, there is. And look, at the end of the day, the way, you know, it was nothing for me to spend, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on an engine for my race car. Um, makes a Scott Bonner pretty cheap, doesn't it? <laughs> Many of the products and services Shane offers help members of the rebuild community progress their builds and realise their goals. I asked Shane what the future of the Scott Bonner badge looks like to him. Well, given where it's gone since I've been involved in the Renault page for a couple of years, um, and probably Scott Bonner in total for probably three years, um, I think it'll continue to grow. Um, however, there comes a point where the machines just aren't going to be there for people to buy. and. It'd be sad to see them priced out of the market, but then in comparison, we see MoMaster and MEY to buy the equivalent machine to a, a properly renovated Scott Bonner is still a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars more. So given that, and I think if you know the ceiling is around that sort of um, price for a Scott Bonner, uh, I, I think the, the future's it's sustainable. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I see that it's going to plateau out, level off, um, but I don't see it falling away. I mean, one would have thought COVID might have made a difference. Well, it was the opposite. Mm. You know, uh, obviously people in, you know, I've been sending a lot of stuff to Melbourne, so people have probably been in um, uh, quarantine or whatever it's called, <laughs> um, and, and decided to, do something with their mower and what have you. So a lot of my stuff goes over there. So given that what, what the country's been through, the world's been through the pandemic, um, Scott Bond has come out at the end stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I see that it'll continue. Um, we just got to see, you know, there's always barn fires, always machines popping up. And we've probably got to be a little bit wary of the, what, what I call flippers out there. They just buy and sell for huge profit to unsuspecting people that think they're getting something that they're not, that can be harmful at the end of the day. And do you yourself feel like you have like you play a role in sort of sustaining the, the Scott Bonner badge into the future in terms of the work that you're putting out in your shop now? Yeah, I, I, um, 
I really happened upon that by accident, I guess. It wasn't my intention to go down this road. But you're here. Uh, but we're here, and uh, bigger than Ben Hur, as they say. Um, yeah, I, I just want to offer people. Um, I tried to do something initially that no one else was doing. That's how the frames come about and the re-railing. No one was doing that. Um, plenty of people out there selling parts. Didn't really need another person doing that. Um, the cutting cylinders I, I manufacture here in-house now. Um, and, you know, that came about because I believe there's probably only a couple of people doing that. Um, so there was a need for a better reel than what was available. And I believe I'm, um, I can provide that and am providing that and developing that all the time. And there's lots of new things. I've got some new things happening um, that I think will be really complement to Scott Bonner. What I try and do is whatever I do, try and keep it to as original as I can. My upgraded cradle, you would hardly see that that has changed. In actual fact, I sent one over to a fellow over east and he contacted me and said, I don't think this is what I was really after. And when I explained it to him, oh, now I see. So, you know, the same as the frames and the rails, um, I try to you know, keep them as original as I can. Shane's marketing model is based largely on his reputation and word of mouth. He sells both locally and interstate. Most of my business, I think, has come from word of mouth. Um, people buy my product, finding out about it from somebody else. Um, they tell someone else and then it comes back to me. I mean, I've got guys that have bought five, six frames off me. Um, the mower, local mower shops are just starting to take an interest in the manufacturing of parts because they're finding, as we do, their machines out of China fail uh, repeatedly through poor quality. Um, and I'm starting to machine up shafts and um, gear like that for them. The MoTeC name is now synonymous with Scott Bonner frames and parts. But like Shane, the company has its roots in the motor industry. Well, MoTeC machining and cylinder models is um, not very old. MoTeC itself, um, started back in 1989, um, as I said earlier, with the Ford Service Centre that I um, uh, had here in Pinjarra. So the company became Motec Holdings. Um, and then I started in 1991, I started Motec Racing and Development as I started manufacturing uh, parts and, and getting more involved in, in, uh, in racing. So Motec Machining and Cylinder Mills is really, I don't know, spin-off is the right word, but it's a, um, it, a follow-on for that. I've just kept the name Motec. I've had it from day one, um, if you like. So I've just kept that flowing. And when things started to ramp up with what I'm doing, um, I needed to have something to, that people could relate to. Um, and Motec machining and cylinder miles is rather long, so it's become MMCM, uh, to, as, just as an abbreviation. Shane is self-reliant and today owns and operates Motec independently. No, it's just me in here. Could I use someone in here? Most certainly could. Um, could really use a machinist, I guess, um, able to uh, operate a CNC as I'm looking at putting another machine in here. Um, but no, there's only me. Um, one thing I've done all my life with no matter what I've pursued is I'll always look for a better way to do something. And it's, it's unbelievable if you adopt that uh, mentality, how things can change. I could demonstrate time and time again things that took me an hour that now take me 10 minutes. And of course, as you do that, then I guess you need you know, less people. But I'm a home-based business and I, I, I like that. I choose to do that. Um, we haven't heard much from them, but I have six adorable little female poodles and they just love having dad home. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I have access to um, a full machine shop, um, CNC bending, laser cutting, and that's where I source that from. Uh, very good friends of mine, uh, two separate businesses there, very good friends of mine own those businesses. Uh, so I have access to them if, if I need to, uh, but I'm trying more and more to set up from home. As I get older, I don't want to work forever. 
Um, I'm just, just comfortable at home, like being home. Shane is a self-described top-end renovator, but he offers his clients a one-stop shop for all of their mower needs. Well, really a full service um, set up if you like. Uh, you know, full renovations. Um, the chap over the road bought a Rover the other week. Um, and, uh, you know, I sorted that out for him. He was very disappointed when he bought it because it wouldn't cut, it just ripped the lawn out. Um, and then he, being my neighbour, uh, said, gee, I heard you were into lawnmowers. <laughs> Probably see some coming in the back of my ute, didn't it? Um, yeah, I look after a few um, people. Um, young lady from Rockingham um, contacted me. She found out about me on the Reno page. She's on Lawn Addicts, I'm on Lawn Addicts. Someone mentioned me on Lawn Addicts. She contacts me and says, I took it to the mower shop, not happy. Um, what can you do for me? So I went and picked up a mower from Rocky and brought it here, uh, did what was needed, gave it back to her. She rang back and said, you're now looking after my mower. So uh, I don't do a lot of renovations purely uh, for the time factor. Um, and, you know, if I do renovations, it's more the top end renovation. Like, like if someone's serious about um, a full on renovation, I'm not into patching up frames. I've never patched a frame up. Um, not into welding anything underneath them. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a top end quality renovation if I do them. What are some of the products that you manufacture and sell? Okay, um, many and varied. I guess the main ones being uh, brand new frames for the forty five. Uh, Rerail your old side plates for the forty five. Um, and that includes solid deck and, and a twin. So I do a brand new deck as well um, in the 14, 17 and 20 inch. Um, I also do the 33 now. So brand new deck, brand new sides. Um, then um, the cutting cylinder. I do an 8 and 10 blade 17, 8 blade 20. I uh, had a fair bit of interest in 14s just lately. So I'll start doing 14 eights. Um, and then all the small stuff from PDO shafts to the catcher pins and um, front roller bushes, which really go hand in hand with the frames that I do anyway. Um, the cradles, the front cradle is a bit of a, I believe, an innovation the way it works. So it's a fair bit of machine in that, as opposed to the standard cradle. Mm -hmm. Underlying his obvious passions, it's a strong ethos to deliver to a high standard. Shane is meticulous by nature, and this shows through in the workmanship of the products he delivers. Exacting, yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it's probably been me in all my life. My dad always taught me, if you're going to do something, do it once, do it properly, and people will always um, come to you. Um, today, it's not necessarily um, correct in as much as, you know, people buy stuff out of China and buy stuff cheap and think they've got a good deal and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, when I race cars, I, I uh, never race with the budgets, anywhere near the budgets of the big boys. Um, yeah, I went to number one in this country, in Australia, in the class that I chose to, to run the car. And, uh, I bought the best I could buy, the right parts, um, and surrounded myself with people similar to me. Um, my fellow that I work for on a casual basis as a fitter machinist. Um, he looked after the engine in my car, as in out, the, out at the race meets, where you know, I just couldn't, I just didn't have the time. Um, and these people were like me, exacting. I could trust them to do exactly what I wanted them to do. When I hopped in the car, I didn't have to say, did you do this, is this right? It was just done. And that, that's how I've been all my life. I mean, I'm, um, a, a perfectionist is what someone said to me once. I strive in that area, I think, um, probably to the extent where it uh, becomes an obsession. Uh, I'll never forget um, when I was in my workshop in Pinjarra in the Ford Service Centre, I was building my very first race car and I was trying to work out the pedals and the ratios to get the correct brake pressure and uh, clutch travel and what have you. And, um, my girlfriend at the time continually shook her head and said, you've spent three weeks on that. Uh, surely can't be that hard. Stop, you know, there's 10 
sets you straight out again. Um, and I guess that's me. I'll keep going till... I, I always have been of the belief that um, there's always a better way to do something. It gets a bit annoying and frustrating when you do something, you make something, it takes a fair bit of time, and then you go, oh gee, this is an easy way to do that, so you're going to do it again. <laughs> and a bit, of, a, bit of a, a bit of a catchphrase of mine, um, in the race for quality, there is no finish line. I like that. Motec, machining and some of the mowers, catchphrase. At the end of the day, some of the stuff I'll make even for the mowers, um, if people think one makes a million dollars out of it, think again, because the time and the development that goes into them um, is, is uh, huge. And the cutting cylinders are a real good example of that. Man, if I had some dramas with them, um, and I didn't need to follow up with those, and the continual follow-up I'm doing now with them, um, yeah, they would sell them, people would buy them, but I want to give people something no one else is, is uh, providing. Uh, you know, a really, a really good, um, long life cylinder. You know, nothing here is MIG welded, Eric's TIG welded, machined, either on CNC or manual. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'll be a perfectionist without a doubt. The Maiden WA label and buy local mindset are big in Western Australia. Just ask any sand groper. According to Shane, WA has a significant history in lawn care, and the Scott Bonner is circulating in the second-hand marketplace to prove it. Shane is a proud West Aussie at heart. Proud of his own accomplishments developing new products for those of us rebuilding Scotties in Western Australia and interstate. It means a lot, um, however, in a business like this, where 75% of my client base is Eastern States, uh, that becomes a, a little hard. Um, you know, um, yeah, made, made in WA is great. We can make everything, everything required for a Scott Bonner lawnmower can be made here. It can be made out of this workshop uh, or my associates workshops. Um, but that's not necessarily what it's about. Uh, there are other people out there doing it long before me. Um, and yeah, you know, there needs to be mutual respect there. And there is. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, WA is important. I'm, I'm pretty proud of what I do. Um, in as much as when I looked at this and, um, and came, uh, yeah, came upon things by accident, I was doing something that no one else was doing. Like, no one was doing frames as, as, to, to the level I'm doing them, um, and only a handful of people doing cylinders, yeah? and, and there's other bits and pieces that, that we do. But yeah, we, we've got to overlap with our, with our fellows over, over the other side, and I think it all works well. But Make W is, is great. Yeah, and look, let's face it, I was told a little story. Um, I, I don't know the, the relevance of this. I, it brings true, though. The little story is simply this. In the 50s and 60s and 70s, WA was the biggest consumer of lawn care products in Australia. And that's because we had quarter acre blocks here with a big back lawn, front lawn. Eastern states, small blocks, more congested, uh, and all went victim -hand. So all the Victor lawn mowers over there, all the Scott Bonners and real mowers ended up over here. So Western Australia has been a treasure trove, uh, treasure uh, trove um, for the procurement of those machines. Lucky we have. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I've been 125 of the things. I don't know if anybody else has got that many. I'm sure there probably is. Um, but um, yes, a lot of them, yeah, are sourced out of WA. I sent. Um, 11 edges to Queensland and for me to sell something like that was a bit um, but the guy was really really great he said we just haven't got any uh, I said oh, I'm not going to send one edge over there it's not worth anybody's time yeah and he said if I can get some people to buy them I said yeah okay you go away come back to me he did he said look um, I've got 10 people can you put 10 people to, you know, can you put 10 edges together and I said I've got 30 of the things um, so I put 10 edges and a, a token series one um, for him. Uh, and I thought it great that someone stuck their neck out, not making a profit, mm. stuck their neck out to source, organize, pay the freight, do it all up front, pay me, um, and give the opportunity to people over there that hadn't even seen one before. Spread the love around again. Yeah, and I thought it was great. So. You know, I took those edges over there. Several of those buyers had come back to me and thanked me and said, hey, you know, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. You know, I've been chasing one for my collection or just want one. 
we just don't get them over here. And um, I feel bad sometimes when I used to, you know, um, tell people like 30 inches and stuff. You know, I feel a bit, <laughs> I feel a bit bad sometimes because, you know, there's just some, some states haven't got them. Shane's workshop is better equipped than your average suburban shed. He's made an investment in machinery and tooling, and I asked him which is his favourite tool. Oh, without a doubt, the, uh, the Cincinnati Avenger. Big one. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's um, a two-axis CNC, um, and gee, one of the best things I've ever bought. Um, probably most unusual for someone to have one in their shed at home. Um, but yeah, lovely machine. Um, it's not young. Um, they were built in the day when they built machines, it was a bit like you know, a Holden motor car compared to a, a new motor car. Um, a very good machine uh, and it's, it's mind-boggling the accuracy and the repetition um, that these machines can produce. And there's lots of new machines around, and, you know, the new machine I'm looking at um, is a you know, three or four axis machine, um, which is, you know, um, opens up a lot of doors. Uh, but certainly the, the most fun thing to, to drive. And what uh, what percentage of your work would you say is coming off the CNC? Oh, the... Um, yeah, probably only you know ten percent, really fifteen percent. But where manually it takes you twenty minutes to make something, the CNC will do it in forty five seconds. And yes, you've got to write a program first, spend the time to do that. But once the program is in the machine, the machine's capable of storing terrible programs. So um, you just call on the program, put the material in there, uh, press go, and you know, it, it's, you know, nowadays I think people deserve that quality too. Um, they don't want to put a bearing on a shaft and the thing just falls on them. You know, they want to be able to not have to belt on the sledgehammer. They want to be able to push it on, um, you know, with the correct uh, interference fit. Uh, that the manufacturer designates that bearing. And you can only do it on these machines. I mean, back in the day, did they do it manually? Sure they did. Um, but they've had specific people working all day on the machines. 30 years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the CNC, yeah, certainly the best, thing, uh, best investment I made to put the machine in here. Well, thanks again for taking the time out to talk to us today, Shane. It's been great and great to meet you today as well. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate you coming down uh, to downtown Pinjarra. We have a treat for you. Uh, great to see you, and uh, and we'll do more again. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we go have a look at the lawn? Absolutely. You like that lawn, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thanks for watching today's episode. It was a special opportunity to chat with Shane, and I hope you found this format interesting. Feel free to hit the like button down below if so. This is the first in a series of collaboration videos we'll be releasing with Shane, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to be notified as new videos are released. If you have any comments or questions for me or Shane, you can carry on the conversation down below in the comment section. And of course, you can find us both on Facebook and Instagram. The loveline.com website is also now live, so feel free to check out everything we have to offer over there. Now, Shane was kind enough to send us home with a set of MMCM sides and a replacement 14-inch solid top for the community build, and they look pretty awesome. Can't wait to get these together in an upcoming episode. Until next time, I'm your host, Michael. Thanks for joining us.